Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. Mind Flow Radio. We're your hosts, Jalen and Lamont McFerrin. We are all in this together. Circles inside of circles, inside of circles, 
<clears throat> inside of circles, 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 inside of circles. Infinity to the far reaches of our minds and beyond. beyond and Streaking past beyond the heavens to forever. Circles inside of circles inside of circles inside of circles. Circles inside of circles inside of circles. Welcome to Mind Flow Radio. Mind Flow Radio. <laughs> here we are. We're back. Here we are. The here eternal we are. present. And he's Monty. She's Jalen. And we have Aaron with us. Hi, Aaron. For our monthly talk on the Tao Te Ching. We've made it to chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> of 81? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is going to be stuck. like a five-year adventure. <laughs> We're going to be so wise by Once the a end month. Of this. Once a month. For our we'll listeners. all be sages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do this once a month. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So Aaron is going to share the first reading through. Chapter yeah. number two. So we're on the second verse, and I'm just going to read through the whole verse uh, just to kind of hear its poetry, and then we'll talk about it. All the world recognize the beautiful as beautiful. Herein lies ugliness. All recognize the good as good. Herein lies evil. Therefore, being and non-being produce each other. Difficulty and ease bring about each other. Long and short delimit each other. High and low rest on each other. Sound and voice harmonize each other. Front and back follow each other. Therefore, the sage abides in the condition of wu-wei, unattached action and carries out the worldless teaching. Here the myriad of things are made, yet not separated. Therefore the sage produces without possessing, acts without expectations, and accomplishes without abiding in her accomplishments. It is precisely because she does not abide in them that they never leave her. And that's the second verse. Nice. Yeah. So... To me, we can break it down, but to me, I just, it, yeah. it's all about paradox mm-hmm. and, and polarities. Polarities and duality. Mm-hmm. And it starts with the beautiful, um, recognizing beautiful as beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, and in order to do that, you have to see ugliness. It's kind of like being the light in the dark. You have mm-hmm. to be in the dark to know that you have light. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, and and to wonder about judging mm. beauty and judging ugly and then breaking it down to a place where it just is. Mm-hmm. And discerning? Yeah. Like, sorry, you're saying discerning would be recognizing that just is and taking the judgment out. Right. Or like if you're going to live, so with the, ta- with the Tao Te Ching, you, you assume that you're living according to the Tao. Mm-hmm. And, the way. Mm-hmm. Right. The way the, and, and if you do that, I think the first step is to be aware of judgment. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. I, uh, yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. I think this chapter is, is more about just transcending concepts. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. be in that place of transcendence, mm-hmm. you know, beyond, beyond labels, mm-hmm. you know, and um, that's what Wu Wei would be, I believe, mm-hmm. a transcendental state, mm-hmm. you know, and as far as it relates to mindfulness, it's kind of mindful awareness in that place of just being without mm-hmm. concepts, mm-hmm. without, oh, I'm so... Um, Manly or whatever, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, whatever the the self concept or the concepts of others or concepts of, of yourself you know, compared to others, yeah, or mm-hmm. just concepts of different political parties mm-hmm. or 
yada 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 you know it just goes on and on and on we love to we love to put things in categories Mm -hmm. you know and maybe if we can spend part of our time in a transcendental place that's beyond concepts and categories Mm -hmm. then we're we're more connected with the Tao. Mm-hmm. More Is that like with the, the bird's way. eye view where you see the trees and the mouse and the, but you're not, well, I guess you'd still want to catch the mouse if you're an eagle. Sorry. <laughs> mm, lost everybody there. <laughs> just, uh, you know, Are you saying you're an eagle? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> sometimes I'm an eagle. What's a mouse sometimes to I'm you? a mouse. So what's yeah, a mouse to you? All right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Man. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think I've changed the subject. But I did want to ask, what is Wu Wei? Isn't Wu Wei the state of God's grace? Yeah. Uh, okay. State of being. Transcendence. What is yeah. it? Then Presence. It's like Wu Wei's it just, attachment. It says, detachment. yeah, it says, therefore the sage abides in the condition of Wu Wei, unattached action. Okay. Right. Oh, that's like karma yoga. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. When, and I, when I think of real life um, situations where being unattached, I go back to all of my years of conversations with Tony Macassett about work conversations and, and how we get super excited about something and we're, we're, we're on the path of creating something really cool. And he always is having to bring me back to, Mm -hmm. but remember you can't be attached to the outcome. Oh yeah. And (laughs) and so that's good job. Yeah, I know. He's a Taoist sage, I guess. (laughs) Got to bring him maybe next month. Yeah. <laughs> we, should, we, we, have, we have one more mic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, you know, the unattached action. Just to think about that. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I, so in other words, I want to do the right thing without considering it right. So I just want to be, I want my mind to be still. And mm. I just want to cool. let the universe flow through me and... Hopefully my behavior follows that mm-hmm. without having that concept if I'm doing the right thing or I'm making good karma for myself or yada, yada, mm, yada. Right. Because right. that's where I get caught up personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, karma you yoga the, is basically selfless desire. Mm-hmm. So you, so, oh, sorry, selfless action. So yeah. the idea is that you do things because you know is the next right thing to do. Mm-hmm but without concern for the outcome ever. Mm-hmm. And so there's no failure. There's no success. There, It's just I am doing what I'm being called to do in this moment, and mm-hmm. I release and surrender and offer up to right. the divine all outcomes. I don't care what they are. Yeah. And I think when you're in a state of Wu Wei, mm-hmm. yeah. you, that, and like Monty said, that transcendence, you no longer even normally have to think about it Mm -hmm. you're you're just on that path right yeah that path is just propelling you Mm -hmm. yeah right you just do the next natural thing yeah it's not even the right thing it's just right oh what's the next natural thing to do this i like that saying because it takes the right wrong out yeah right yeah Mm -hmm. the next natural thing Uh Mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of goes back to self-love though Mm -hmm. in order to know that you're doing (laughs) <laughs> the next natural thing that is right. Sure. Well, Once come, you get to a state yeah. of being that is there, I, I think about when people talk about God's grace yeah. and being in God's grace and and any confusion surrounding that. How can I be in God's grace? Yeah. You know, how can I get there and stay there? And yeah. And it's just a state of being. Of, it is. Of it becoming is. one with God. Right. Well, and what Thomas Trust. Merton mm-hmm. says. Mm-hmm. Have you read? No, but he's... I've listened to a lot of it podcasts surrounding his okay. his work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, famous um, Catholic mystic, mm-hmm. you know, um, contemporary. And uh, he said that he felt that, that God's energy was always raining down on us, mm-hmm. always. And if we could find stillness, we allow it in. Mm-hmm. You see, but if our minds mm-hmm. are all choppy, if our if our minds are like a a lake that's all like wavy. Mm-hmm. Then the, the light cannot penetrate that. But if we can still our minds and then 
the universal energy or God's energy can come into us. Mm -hmm. And I I love that. I love that idea that the the energy is always raining down on us. Yeah. You know, so thank you, Thomas Merton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's he's a really cool guy. And that's where like Christian prayer Mm -hmm. and, you know, the the Buddhist meditation. Or Christian contemplation. And even deeper is contemplation. But I... I think it starts with learning prayer in the in the beginning and then building to a more contemplative practice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's something I'm trying to learn now is prayer. Yeah. I'm I'm just starting, you know, as far as prayer goes. I think mm-hmm. when I think about prayer between Jay and Monty, I mean, I think about your chants are very prayer like. Um the, yeah. It is kind of like, this is my intention. I'm Mm -hmm. setting an intention. Um, And I know that there's many denominations that have their different definitions Mm -hmm. of what a prayer is. And some prayers are set words that you say before meal or Mm -hmm. or before bed. And then other denominations are like, it's supposed to be coming from your heart. And it's these random requests. And I've heard that prayer should not be about what, I want in my life, Mm -hmm. but what I want to see in the world Mm -hmm. to better the world. Mm -hmm. And that would be actual prayer versus just asking God for for things. things. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's so many ways Mm -hmm. to look at prayer, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but I love the idea of contemplation because that adds in well, the idea would be that you're contemplating for the highest good. So what is the highest good? How do I fit into it? Mm-hmm. And which goes into Hinduism and Buddhism and Taoism. And mm-hmm. it's where they all connect, in my right. opinion. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that intention is usually based on love. Mm-hmm. And, and then that's where, again, all of the religions tend to be very similar Mm-hmm. or at least all of them that I've read about. Yeah. I was thinking when we were talking about prayer, when Christopher died, I had an aunt who sent me a message, a thoughtful message, and just said, you know, you're in my prayers. And she said, and to me, prayers are my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's how I pray. And I th- and I just thought that was really simple and sweet and yeah. and just a different way for me to to think about it, that there are Christians who are praying just in loving thoughts of others, and that's their mm-hmm. prayer. Mm-hmm. And that's just Absolutely. a simple beauty. Simple beauty. <laughs> yeah. And if we could all pray like that, or a lot of us could pray like that, yeah. the world would be a much better place, that's mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. What just came up for me is I know that both of us are reading the Book of Joy uh-huh. in Archbishop Tutu, and uh-huh. he has like this long list of prayer for people, you know, mm-hmm. praying for their health or their well-being or injuries mm-hmm. to be healed or whatever it is for their children. And his view on loving humankind is just so palpable mm-hmm. and that that's what we're here to do. And whenever something comes at us, it's it, if we can look at it from, oh, maybe they're having a really bad day and... Mm-hmm. Instead of like, why are they so mean to me? <laughs> right, just removing yourself, yeah. you know, from the from the equation. A lot of times, I think is helpful in that situation. Like mm-hmm. just accepting that they are where they are, mm-hmm. and it has nothing to do with you, mm-hmm. and right. just accepting them in that state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just seeing them as a spiritual being. Yeah, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, essentially, and we're seeing ourselves as a spiritual being. And, mm-hmm. And it's way easier to to get into that place of love, I think, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, and if somebody is unkind, you know, which I can be some of the time for sure, you know, it's like, I'm just confused. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's unkind to me, they're just confused and so be it. Mm -hmm. You know, we we need to evolve a a bit for sure, you know, Mm -hmm. and be less confused, but... Right, or they've never, I think some of them have never recognize their ego Mm -hmm. they don't they're not aware more than confused i think it's an awareness too Mm -hmm. that others just here i am othering um (laughs) but sometimes they just haven't evolved to be aware of what their ego even is it's just like with addiction yeah. you know you the first step is being aware that i'm addicted to something yeah it's the same Mm -hmm. yeah 
So being aware that the ego can, um, if it's out of balance, it can be um, a disruptive force, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. So what is a balanced ego? What do you, what do you, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> comes up every day. Yeah. <laughs> the question think, of it. Yeah. In your mind? In my mind or in okay. conversation or, okay. yeah, I, I think it's, I think it goes back to doing if you're in a state of grace and you're doing the next right thing or the mm -hmm. next natural thing, yeah. that's not your ego. Okay. Right. But then there comes time where you, you have to have ego. But again, I remember your, your discussion with Sonia mm -hmm. talked about where do you feel it in your body? Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're, if you're making plans for something that is exciting and feels good and you feel it in your heart and yeah. you feel open to all the possibilities, then it's unlikely a unchecked ego. Right. But if you're pushing okay. for something yeah. and you're angry and it's power. Tense. Tense. You feel it in your throat. Power tripping. Or the stomach yep. is knotted yep. up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then I think that's more egoic. In a negative way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Overbearing ego, mm -hmm. ego I, tripping. I do feel like it's, um, this is a good moment to say what I wanted to add on air. Last week mm -hmm. we talked about it afterwards, but this idea of not feeling mm -hmm. and letting that be the guide, the not feeling. And I have been thinking about that a lot, the ease of something like I feel very Jeez. easy right now there's mm -hmm. I don't feel yeah. any tension mm -hmm. about what I need to do in this moment mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I that is a guide to me that it's all good right and there's nothing to be concerned about and I was thinking about that um in my favorite astrologer Christopher Wateki a little plug for mm -hmm. serious mm -hmm. joy and he said the same thing very recently. He's like, when you don't feel, that's yeah. and that's like, keep going. Because there's path. no resistance. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like you're feeling no resistance. Because mm -hmm. sure. it's just ease. So you're not even feeling that elation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just natural. Yeah. Yeah. And the elation can maybe be uh, distracting too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So Right. We we can become addicted to wanting to be elated, right? You know, yeah. how am I going to get there? Yeah, you know, or the relationships. I mean, Sonia yeah. and I have talked about relationships, and it's mm -hmm. it's that elation of a new relationship. Mm -hmm. You know that we see a lot in in people who they just keep searching for that feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the honeymoon, the honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's usually. More ego, maybe. Yeah. Well, the ego seeks it's elation. The longing. You yeah. Know? The, the longing. It's external the, worth. Too. I mean, mm -hmm. drug exactly. seeking too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You're 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 going after that mm -hmm. feeling of elation. Mm -hmm. You know, and you've been there before through drugs, so you just keep seeking it and mm -hmm. try it again. And oh, it didn't work this time. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I made yep. some mistakes, didn't I? Oh. Yep. Try it again. Yep. <laughs> You're seeking that. And, that, yeah. that, you know, you, you hear that so often and and they never experience that again. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Gabor Mate, he's a great teacher and expert on drug addiction. And he says that essentially a drug addiction is a spiritual crisis mm. at its core. Oh, yeah. I guess that's it. It's the ego just completely taking charge mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. deriving us. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the, the drug addicts, I mean, you know, I've, I have my struggles with substances, you know, whether it's coffee or whatever, right? <laughs> I mean, that's real. I mean, Facebook is a drug to me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, so, so a drug. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but I, I push for moderation with these mm -hmm. substances, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. instead of, instead of just, I don't know, letting the ego run mm -hmm. me i guess and i in defense of <laughs> the process i feel like for some people addiction is a coping mechanism mm -hmm. of just trying to deal with the pain mm -hmm. under the surface yeah. and they're back to awareness without awareness they can't face or heal 
or even begin mm-hmm. to overcome. So then they have this, uh, what do you call it? A, a substance. It's like a blanket. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. this is my comfortable blanket yeah. that I carry that around I put with on. me. Mm-hmm. And that can it's work sometimes. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's effective. You it know? does. Self-medication, you know, yeah. medicating ourselves. And I mean, I don't mean to say that in a way that I'm, I'm a proponent of addiction, yeah. but I do know that. Understanding why. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been there before and that's like what a lot of alcohol use is all about mm-hmm. is like, this is how I cope with that story that I don't want to talk that about. That I don't talk about. Right. It's never letting that story come up and that's mm-hmm. how you continue to suppress it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at some point. There's an evolution of spirit connection awareness where it's like, oh, I think I'm going to at least be aware Mm -hmm. that I'm making the decision. Mm -hmm. And it's no longer just this blind coping mechanism. Right. It's like, I have the choice. Sometimes that awareness, though, doesn't come until death. Yep. And that's true. And that's okay, too, though. Absolutely. That's okay. That's their path. It's natural. Yep. It's natural. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, not getting too hung up on this lifetime either. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. That's I mean, we're huge. trained to be totally mm-hmm. hung up on I would say we're addicted life. to the fear of death. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. is in itself is keeping us in our spirals of yeah. decision because mm-hmm. we're addicted to yeah. the fear of death. Well, then in reality. What will it be like to grow old? Oh, right. no. It could be really bad. Yeah, it'll be lonely <laughs> and just the anticipation and, and just think too then if you're if and I experienced this a lot at work where people truly are coming in because they're afraid to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and then they miss all the moments in between. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they're missing exactly. all of those moments in this fear of death. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes and that's okay because that may be their path. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. And then hopefully when they truly are faced with death. Yeah, they'll have that awakening to um, the the ease. Yeah, the ease <laughs> of acceptance and and talk love about a and, natural step. Yeah. yeah, you know that's mm-hmm. natural. Yeah, it is, and it's it's in uh, yoga. It's a the there's this idea of jiva mukta, mm-hmm. and it's a rare experience for someone, and it means becoming liberated while alive mm-hmm. because it's natural for us to be liberated when we die mm-hmm. but to be liberated and get to have the experience of living with liberation is yeah. is what yogis are looking for right living your soul work on earth yes. instead of waiting till death when your soul is released yep. yeah to the afterlife and that way we don't create a bunch of bad karma for ourselves either right ideally right. <laughs> i mean Mm-hmm. It's kind of hard being a just speaking of karma. It's kind of hard being a member of this culture and not racking up a bunch of bad karma, though. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, tax money. Yeah. You know, where's that going? Ooh, mm. how's that affect my karma? No, we don't I get don't to know. vote with our dollar when we have to pay our taxes. That's one thing that could change is <laughs> governmentally, we should all be able to, mm. we shouldn't pay less in taxes, but we should all be able to individually choose mm. where our tax money goes. Yeah. When that might create more balance. I mean, truly. <laughs> There's plenty mm-hmm. of people who would give money to the military. Yeah, right. You know, I, I might not. Mm-hmm. You know, I might give my money to... But knowing that your neighbor is yeah. and that you're giving money to uh, some other cause. Yeah. Organic farming. Yeah. Preventative <laughs> medicine. I don't think organic Prevent- farming is a governmental program, but... What well, should be? Yeah, it will be. <laughs> yeah, it should be. It should be. <laughs> it will be someday. Yeah, let's feed all the people <laughs> in the world food. with organic food. Yeah, let's get rid of the pesticides and herbicides. Uh-huh. Yay! Uh-huh. Healthy food for everyone. <gasps> it's a human Healthy right. Food. Monty's starting. It's it. a human right. <laughs> it's a human right. It is actually. <laughs> well, it should be. I guess. Mm. Well, it is. Mm-hmm. It is, and we just have to realize that we have to be more compassionate and knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. We have to educate mm-hmm. ourselves. We can't rely on the government to educate us. Right. Really. We have to educate others, really. too. Mm-hmm. And yeah, help others right. To, you know, one thing in my practice that I love is just to have the platform to talk about food, mm-hmm. right? Oh, to, okay. To just talk yeah. about nutrition. And, mm-hmm. yeah. and I certainly don't go down the 
organic route always, yeah. but I certainly always go down the healthy whole yeah, food route. Right, mm-hmm. right. And it's awesome. You know, fortunately, a lot of our community either has enough wealth to purchase whole food or they some of them have cards and they've just never learned what healthy food and nutrition is. Sure. Yeah. If you go, you know, you you if you rely on the government to teach you, yeah. they misguide us yeah. or have as misguided as that, us. Yeah, that can change. And for and sure. I do believe it they will change. I believe it will too. Yes. Yeah. It will. Yeah. We're on the cusp of that hopefully. I do believe that's true. Mm-hmm. But I do want to pull it back around and is there do we want to read it one more time and see if there's any sure. closing anything up that comes up? We have? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the second verse of the Tao again, all in the world recognize the beautiful is beautiful, herein lies ugliness. All recognize the good is good, herein lies evil. Therefore, being and non-being produce each other. Difficulty and ease bring about each other. Long and short delimit each other. High and low rest on each other. Sound and voice harmonize each other. Front and back follow each other. Therefore, the sage abides in the condition of Wu Wei, unattached action, and carries out the worldless teachings. Herein, the myriad here the myriad of things are made, yet not separated. Therefore, the sage produces without possessing, acts without expectations, and accomplishes without abiding in her accomplishments. It is precisely because she does not abide in them that they never leave her. I think that is something to to think about. It's if the myriad of things abide in her, but she isn't attached to them, so mm-hmm. they never leave her. Mm-hmm. That's really a beautiful concept. Like, what? Kind of... Mm-hmm. And yet, and they never, the, if you go to the myriad of things, yet they never stay mm-hmm. in her either. Right. They, they never, she she remains separate from them, mm-hmm. but still allows them mm-hmm. and has the myriad of things. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that where we talked about ego versus non-ego. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you allow it to be in balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like, let's just, I'm constantly working to keep my ego just mm-hmm. in balance. Mm-hmm. In its place. Mm -hmm. What it makes me think about is the space that needs to be allowed for things. And um, I'm doing this 40 days of self-love thing. And there is this idea of creating this altar of your heart. And so you, you clean everybody out of your heart. You clean all experiences, all memories. And you create this beautiful altar in your heart. And in my mind, I put purple ropes around it, and and there was like beautiful red velvety um, rugs, Flow. yeah, mm-hmm. with the uh, with my heart on this beautiful golden pedestal, and I, this is my imagination and what I imagined, and all the people I loved could be on the outside of the rope mm. to witness the shifting and the growing and the evolving, but. I didn't want them in my heart. Mm -hmm. And that idea of being able to accept and flow and be a part Mm -hmm. of it, but not entangled in it, that's what comes up for me is if if we create sacred space where something can grow Mm -hmm. and yet witness it with love and compassion Mm -hmm. and be there without the attachment of what will it be when it's grown Mm -hmm. and... And hold that space. I just yeah. think that's super Allowing beautiful. Allowing it, but hold separation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you see yourself in your heart? I do, uh-huh. like kneeling in front of my heart, like, I'm here, I'm holding space for you. Mm-hmm. Kind of like a special uh, ceremony where it's just me and my heart mm-hmm. and all the people who love me and all the people I love can watch But they can't be in there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's kind of like those fancy museums where you wish you could go in there and touch things, but you can't. (laughs) It's a perfect. It's a perfect union, a perfect marriage, a perfect. You know, you you are still separate from from your partner, and and so that's really cool. Yeah, Mm -hmm. beautiful. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, do we have any final thoughts, words? Uh, no. I think that went on a lot of different directions, yeah. but it was sure fun. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Wu-wee. Uh-huh. Wu-wee, I think, Wu-wee, right? the transcendental place. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Non attachment, detachment, acceptance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beyond it's concepts. Mm-hmm. At least part of the time. Beyond I mean, polarity. it's not like we're going to be there all the time, but let's just be there part of the time. Mm-hmm. And then we're in balance. Mm-hmm. What just went through my mind is the the polarities and how we have to see them all. Mm-hmm. We have to welcome them all. We have to look at the continuum and say, okay, this is at the end of this continuum. This is on the other end of this continuum. And there's all these things in between. And I accept yeah. the whole I don't judge picture. it right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just allow it to be. Mm-hmm. I've worked with that with my boys these last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Like to stop judgment of each other or things or, and I just kind of try to reframe them to, well, maybe, but probably it just is. Mm-hmm. And that, and I think accepting it to just be and, and just is, um, is where like non-judgment comes in. And I forgot what I was going to say. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm really good with that. Oh, uh, shucks. I would say, you know, for, if we're seeking non-judgment, just finding that discernment, you know, and seeing the entire picture, but if we want change, let's pour energy into the... Solutions. Yeah, into the solutions. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, if we want the Perfect. solutions to happen, we have to put energy, put energy into yeah. them. We can't right. be like, these are the solutions, somebody needs to do that. I mean, and that, that's how we <laughs> right. have to evolve as humanity. Instead of going to war with um, the problem, mm-hmm. we create the solution mm-hmm. and we move in that direction. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. So thanks mm-hmm. for being here. Yeah. yeah. Jalen and Aaron. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I love this little commitment we've mm-hmm. made to each it's other. Fun. It'll right. be fun to see how us and our listeners evolve in Over these five wisdoms. Years. Yeah. <laughs> Mind Flow Radio. Mind Flow Radio. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move into a guided meditation so that you can embrace those concepts that we just talked about. So I hope you have a moment to settle in. And if not, just being a witness and listening is is also a powerful experience. So take a few breaths. Focusing on your exhale for a few breaths. Just releasing, releasing the past, releasing the future. Let's just be here now. Feeling your body being supported by the earth, whether you're standing and feeling your feet sitting, feeling all the parts of you being held by your chair, or laying down and feeling all the parts of your back being supported and held. Just recognize this support. Each exhale, releasing, releasing your weight into that support, releasing everything that doesn't serve the present moment, setting it down for this moment and knowing you can pick it back up when this is over, if you want. Feeling the peace. Feeling the breath. Imagining the energy at the top of the head, the top of the head, the crown chakra, this opening that connects you to the higher power, the source of all creation, 
allowing your awareness to soften and allow this door to open. And thinking of yourself as a grounding rod or a lightning rod, allowing this divine energy in through the top of the head as you inhale, inhaling top of the head through the neck, through the rib cage, through the heart center, through the core, down into your sits bones. Exhale down your legs, into your feet, into the earth. Inhaling, bringing, drawing that energy down the core of the body into the sits bones, into the pelvic floor. Exhale down the legs. On your own breath, every inhale, bring that energy down, grounding down, rooting down, getting centered, exhaling down the legs, through the feet. And just a few more breaths like that, really feel the core of your being open to receive as you draw this energy down, releasing all tension in your low back. As you draw this energy through the core, recognizing your sits bones and your pelvic floor, and then feeling your femurs, knees, shins, feet as you exhale. All that we have is this moment, this moment. You are filled with the energy of divine. You are connected, you are present. You are steady, you are stable, you are here now. You are here now with all of the other listeners throughout all time and space. We are all here now. We are all here now. And bringing your hand to your heart center, sensing this magnificent center with a torus of energy around it, so vast, expanding as you find this grounded energy, this settled, steady energy. Your heart energy expands when you're grounded. Your heart energy expands when you're in this present moment and feeling, feeling the openness, feeling the presence with yourself. Feeling your heart is your best friend. Feeling the love from your heart for yourself. Your heart is the unconditional loving being within your own physical presence. You always had it, it is right here. You are loved so deeply and fully. Here and now, a witness to your own completeness, to your wholeness, and everything that feels Embracing any emotion that comes up. Honoring your heart 
by being present, not pushing anything away right now, just being present with any and every sensation. Bringing your mind into your heart, letting your mind be a witness to this love, letting your mind recognize this is the love you seek right here, right here. Taking a few more breaths, just holding your heart, being present, witnessing, feeling gratitude, really draw the emotion, the feeling, the awareness of gratitude over these next couple breaths, really thank you heart, thank you heart, thank you heart, thank you life, thank you heart, thank you heart, thank you heart. Thank you, 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 thank you. And still holding your heart, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you, I love you, thank you, I love you. Just noticing any sensations that shift in your heart center as you awaken the love within you for yourself. You awaken the acceptance, the presence, the healing, the nurturing. You are here to nurture yourself now. Fill up the well. And from there, overflow your love to the community, to your family, to the culture. Overflow love into the wounds of this world. But from a loving place, it must be a loving place. Be the salve. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bringing your awareness back to the top of your head and taking a few breaths from the top of your head to your heart, right into your hand and just feel that divine love joining your self-love. Fill that well up. If you've been feeling drained, now is the time to fill up. If you've been feeling good, it's just as good of a time to fill up some more. And now grounding back into the present moment, remembering that steadiness, remembering you are a grounding rod for divine energy. We all are. You are and I am and we are. We are here 
to bring that divine energy into being. Inhaling through the crown, through the core of the body, into the sits bones, opening your channel all the way down to the sits bones. Exhale down the legs, through the feet, into the earth. Inhaling down the core of the body. Exhaling down the legs, through the feet, into the earth. And bringing your hands to your heart center, acknowledging that we are in this present moment together. We are in this moment nurturing ourselves. We are in this moment loving ourselves, accepting ourselves, being present with ourselves. And I am grateful for you in doing this work with me. May we be the light in the dark. May we be the lighthouse. Namaste. Sitting on the roof, watch the moon come up. Sitting on the roof, watch the moon come up. Sitting on the roof, watch the moon come up. Wah, 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 wah. Sitting on the roof, watch the moon come up. Sitting on the roof, watch the moon come up. Sitting on the roof, watch the moon come up. Contemplating, ruminating, watching all my thoughts. Contemplating, ruminating, watching all my thoughts. Contemplating, ruminating, watching all my thoughts. We are all one. We are. Breathe in, breathe out. 
out breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out interconnected tapestry woven through time surrounded by intricate energy some of it Some of it is mine. You are never alone. We are here together. We shine our lights from within our hearts. We share with each other. We share from our well, our well of experience of understanding our well shows how healthy our emotional field is the well is filtered through this emotional field So be well, do well, drink from your well, and overflow into the world. Thank you for listening. We love you. Be well out there, and have a mindful moment. Thank you for your presence. You've been listening to MindFlow Radio. You can support MindFlow Radio on Patreon and get exclusive content access. Big gratitude to Lotus Head for their mindful music, keeping us in the flow. A shout out to our sponsors, Integrated Mindfulness Institute. Online visit www.imi.earth For ideas, questions, or comments, contact us by email connect at imi.earth Many blessings on our health and peaceful evolution. We are all in this together.